This video was made in collaboration with the Avatar Wiki. If you'd like to learn more, check out the link in the description. The History of the Water Tribe The Water Tribe is a collective term for the nation of people who practice the art of waterbending. It is one of the original four nations, and its citizens primarily inhabit the northern and southern regions of the globe, near both poles. Many people of Water Tribe ethnicity also live in the United Republic, and there is a small community of waterbenders that populate the Foggy Swamp in the Earth Kingdom, although they were isolated from their sister tribes for generations, and others were largely unaware of their existence until they were stumbled upon by Avatar Aang, Katara, and Sokka. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the history of the Water Tribe. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Origin In the era of Rava, predecessors of the Water Tribe received the element of water from lion turtles that granted the bending art through energy bending. They could request the ability whenever they ventured into the spirit wilds to aid in the gathering of food and resources. These people eventually congregated to form the Water Tribe after the lion turtles renounced their roles as protectors of mankind. At this point, the ancestors of the first tribesmen left the Lion Turtle cities in favor of establishing settlements centered in the North Pole, despite the fact that some of the cities from which the people of the Water Tribe originated were located in tropical regions. Nevertheless, several aspects of life and observances practiced by the predecessors of the first members of the Water Tribe became part of the nation's culture, such as their dependence on water for sustenance. Furthermore, the implementation of blue, dome-like structures still remains as an integral part of Water Tribe architecture. However, there were also several differences. As the predecessors of the Water Tribe lived in regions of more temperate climate than the modern Water Tribes, their clothing and weaponry were completely unlike that of the later Polar Water Tribes. Instead, these aspects of their culture bore certain resemblance to early Fire Nation culture. Eventually, they relocated to the North Pole and formed several independent tribes. These tribes were later united by a group of waterbenders who built Agna Kela as center and capital for the water tribe. This unity declined after a time of civil unrest, however, and a group of secessionists journeyed to the South Pole to engender a new tribe. Thus, the water tribe split into the Northern and Southern Water Tribe, leading to a cultural and political division that continued until modern times. Culture The appearance of the water tribe is based on its corresponding element, water. Each of the nations has its own elemental color which in the case of the water tribes is blue. The Foggy Swamp tribe is an exception as they tend to wear green due to their affinity with plants. The water tribe is divided into three distinct groups, primarily based on their geography and affinity for water bending. The southern tribe occupies the South Pole with Katara as its only known bending member during the war, the art having been almost completely erased from the South Pole as a direct result of the Fire Nation raids. The northern tribe consists of the majority of the official remnants of their civilization, occupying the North Pole with a multitude of able benders. Though separated, the southern and northern tribes continued to remain in contact prior to the Hundred Year War, and at one time even retained a custom of coming together during a new moon justly called the New Moon Celebration. The Foggy Swamp tribe occupies a swamp in the Earth Kingdom, while most, if not all, of its members are competent benders with some unique talents, such as plant bending. Despite having some patriarchal inclination, the Water Tribe has a long history of acceptance regarding same-sex relationships. They believe that one's personal life is theirs to divulge and no one else's. Customs In the Northern Water Tribe, women are of marrying age at the age of 16. Males who wish to marry females gift them with a traditional betrothal necklace. This signifies that the woman is to be married. This ceremony is completely organized by the parents and marriage of free choice is not practiced. However, in the Southern Water Tribe, it seems that people are allowed to choose their own spouses. When they turn 14, Southern Water Tribe children are taken on a rite of passage known as ice dodging, a sport where the children must control a ship in turbulent water riddled with large, haphazard chunks of ice. After completing that ritual, they are given marks of honor, the mark of the brave, the mark of the wise, and the mark of the trusted. Katara, Sokka, and Aang earned these marks, respectively, for completing this ritual early in 100 AG. The names of the southern and northern tribe citizens often include one or two Ks and have an ah sound. For example, Katara, Hakoda, Saka, Paku, Kaya, Kuruk, Kana, Arnuk, Kora, Tarlok, etc. Such as happens in the Fire Nation with the letter Z. However, this does not happen in the Foggy Swamp tribe. Season 
Each of the four nations is influenced by their own distinct dominant season. The water tribe's dominant season is winter. For this reason, more waterbenders are born during winter than any other season, and their waterbending is at its peak during the winter due to longer nights and freezing conditions. In actuality, each polar tribe experiences winter-like weather consistently, with snow falling year-round. Natural Resources Inhabiting frozen poles near the seas, the water tribes are dependent on the oceans for a majority of their natural resources, as well as the bounty of the frozen tundra. Sea prunes are a favorite, while giant sea crabs are considered a delicious delicacy to those in the northern sea. Sea squid is a popular food that can be made into a variety of things, including squid soup. Seaweed can be used to make seaweed bread, seaweed soup, or seaweed sprinkles to top seaweed cookies. When traveling, blubbered seal jerky is a common snack to take along. Skins from seals are used to create tents in the southern water tribe, pelts from polar bears and other furry animals are used as clothing and to cover barren surfaces. Naturally, hunters and fishermen of the water tribes are some of the best in the world in their field. The foggy swamp tribe uses the plants and fauna in their swamp to meet their needs. They eat small game, such as possum chicken, fish, and giant insects. Government the Water Tribe originally did not have an overall leader. After the Hundred Year War, both its main divisions fell under the rule of one chief, following a civil war in 171 AG. The Southern Water Tribe became independent and is now ruled by its own chief. Law Enforcement Due to its division into three parts, each part of the tribe has developed its own customs and methods of law enforcement. While the Northern and Southern Water Tribes have differing judicial systems, the Foggy Swamp Tribe lacks a known system of law enforcement. Northern Water Tribe The chief of the Northern Water Tribe is in charge of the entire judicial system, including crime fighting, law interpretation, and court trial. The only known laws in the Northern Water Tribe are those from around 100 AG that pertain to the rights of women. The law imposes major restrictions on women's rights that prohibit them from learning waterbending for anything other than healing or choosing their own spouse. Southern Water Tribe the political system of the Southern Water Tribe quickly became disorganized during the Hundred Year War, with no true authority figure left in the village as all able-bodied men had gone off to fight. After the war's conclusion, the tribe progressed significantly with aid from the Northern Tribe, establishing a more complex judicial system. Military As a result of the strong customary theme expressed by the two major sects, the Water Tribe's military during the Hundred Year War was considerably under-resourced in comparison with that of the Earth Kingdom or the highly industrialized Fire Nation. Nevertheless, the tribes exhibited deep pride and willpower typical of a warrior race. During the Hundred Year War, they specialized in sabotage and reconnaissance missions against the Fire Nation. Appearance Ethnically homogenous, members of each tribe typically have blue or gray eyes, light or deep brown hair, sometimes black, and a light brown skin tone. Water Tribe clothing is usually a set of blue anorak and trousers lined and trimmed with white fur, accompanied by mittens and mukluks. Men may wear their hair long and half up or in short ponytails, also known as warrior's wolf tails. Women plait and braid their hair in various styles, sometimes with accent beads, and many sport hair loopies in various styles. In the Southern Water Tribe, women have been shown wearing their hair back in a bun with a decorative band. In the Northern Water Tribe, Males appear to wear a darker blue than those of the Southern Water Tribe, and royalty often wears purple. Their influences and sometimes appearances are drawn greatly from Inuit and Native American fashion. In the Foggy Swamp Tribe, inhabitants wear simple leaf hats, loincloths, and wristbands, all in green, reflecting the color of the water in their surroundings, and sometimes they also use wooden armor. Did you enjoy the video? Be sure to tell us in the comments! And make sure to subscribe and check out these other great videos from the Amagi. If you'd like to support me, you can also subscribe to my personal channel. See you guys tomorrow!